told myself that it wasn't all that bad. Boy, was I wrong. I was a Christian. I thought I was fine. I was content with my life. It's always this gut feeling that you get like, oh, I shouldn't do this. Even though I saw the warning signals, I just ignored them because I knew what I wanted. I wanted to just be irresponsible a little bit. I prayed for the warning signs to go away. Consequences never crossed my mind. A warning can save your life. There have been many crashes that have occurred when pilots fail to heed the warning systems or to follow the checklist. Well, you see, God has warnings as well. Is God given you a warning? Even though everything feels fine. We were in ministry. I was a Jesus girl. We were rock solid. It was on Sunday mornings, really, that I felt most alive. I felt like God played the biggest role in my success, but it wasn't entirely what it looked like. There's a moment in life, like when something bad happens, something goes terribly wrong, and you wonder how you got there. Looking back now, I never realized how quickly life can change. I had done this for so long, I just got complacent. All the warnings were there, and I miss them, every single one. In an airplane, we have something called proximity warning. If you get too close to the ground, uh, it will start telling you, pull up, pull up. It's warning you. And here's a warning from the Bible. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty where people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, Proud, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having an appearance of godliness, but denying his power. In the church today, there is an appearance of godliness, but there is unrepented sin. Like a pilot doubting instruments, Christians have doubted many of God's principles. Today, it's okay for Christians to be all about self on Facebook. It seems to be okay to be lovers of pleasure. I've heard people say, God wants me to be happy. And so they use this as a license for adultery and homosexuality. It's okay to watch perverted TV programs and movies. Pornography. Pornography is a huge problem in the church today for men and women. Many Christians have lost holiness and purity in their own personal lives. You need to take sin seriously. From the outside, it looked good, except for the secret part that nobody knew about. One that carried, in my mind, no risk. Pornography hooked me deep. Bob and I both loved that whole idea of doing anything for Jesus. As a pastor, I saw this young man who just needed some guidance. So we invited him to be a part of our family activities. I remember feeling so exhausted, so overwhelmed, and hiding that. And then this young guy starts coming into our life, and the first thing he says is, hey, can I help you? And I was like, yes, thank you. But the more we hung out together, it turned into, you are, you are so beautiful in every way. When I knew I was gonna be seeing him, I made sure I looked good. I wanted to feel loved and accepted fully. That's something that I hadn't had with my family or with the small town I was in. 
I remember posting on Facebook, the Lord is my shepherd and he knows that I'm gay. And that was my way of saying that God knows me and accepts me and my sin. People always ask me, how did I find track and field? I've been fast all my life. I remember being a kid and making my dad proud of me. It was one of the best feelings ever. So when I became famous in track, I asked God to help me win in any way possible. I come across a steroid that's undetectable. It had to be from God. When I was sinning, it didn't even feel like a sin. So me using drugs to affect me didn't feel like I was hurting nobody but me. I felt like I was invincible. I thought I could have this guy flirting with me. Nothing would ever really happen. I recognized the warning signals, but part of me didn't even care because I was craving this so bad. Tim Montgomery goes in lane five. There he is. Away they go. Great start from Dwayne Chambers. Here comes Tim Montgomery. Chambers now gets into his stride. Montgomery leading at the moment. Chambers trying to come back to him, but he's not going to get there. Montgomery wins this one. Time, 9.78. It's a new world record. When I crossed the finish line, all I could think about was, Thank you, Jesus. Some people might not want to hear this, but I've got to tell you the truth. Many Christians in today's churches are in a spiritual fog, but they don't know it. They're being blinded by this godless, corrupt culture of tolerance and political correctness. As a pilot, you can end up in fog. You lose your orientation, and you just cannot trust your senses without trusting the instruments of your aircraft. You think that you're keeping it level, but you're in a serious dive. And you see, there's some of you here tonight that you've been flying through your life blind. Christians are trusting their feelings instead of trusting God's instrument for the correction in our lives, and that's his holy word, the Bible. This is God's word. This is our compass for life. If Jesus were to write you a letter, what would he say to you? Here's what he said to the church in Revelation. He said, I've known your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Seatbelts. Wake up and strengthen what remains. It is about to die and repent. Atlanta Center, 424 Romeo. Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. I had a sexual affair with this guy for three weeks. I knew that it couldn't continue because I just felt something in my heart say, you have to tell Bob. It was the most intense, scary, awful moment in the whole world. And I said, I actually did, I did it. I had an affair. So immediately my mind is flooded images of her with this person. Where am I? Where were our children? This isn't just a little oops. You say that you love me, but yet you give yourself like this? It makes no sense. The rage and the anger that I had was so intense. I just stormed out of the room, slammed doors, stomped my feet. I mean, I was a mess. I really wanted to hurt her. I wanted her to feel what I was feeling. 
Just when I didn't think the desperation could get any lower, I found out that as a result of this affair, I had become pregnant. And on that day, I didn't think I could face my life. I just felt like I had blown up my whole family. Wake up before it's too late. Wake up, sin destroys. Sin has to be confessed and dealt with. Porn took me places I never thought I would go. Pornography groomed me, trained me, set me up. So one night I'm just driving along and I see a girl beside the road. I pull over and, and suddenly I'm picking up my first prostitute on my way to a Christmas Eve service. If you're living in sin, you're gonna suffer serious consequences and also those around you. And then one night, my wife caught me. That hurt her. Innocent family members and others get hurt. She said, I'm done. She said, I still love you, but I don't like you. I don't trust you. I don't respect you. And I don't think you can ever change. Even though I called myself a Christian, I was living in the LGBT lifestyle. My aunt asked me to be in a Bible study. So I was learning about the goodness of God and the holiness of God. And I was thinking about my identity. When I was looking at the scriptures, I, I realized I wasn't reading the Bible to understand what it said. I was cherry picking verses and it's not Christianity at all. It was really a struggle in this flesh that didn't want to change. I was either going to accept this as truth, all of it, even the parts that I didn't like, or I was gonna cast it all aside. Everything that I thought I got away with came full circle. I got caught using steroids. I lost my records. I lost my sponsorships. Everything was gone overnight. Many Christians think they're okay. Okay, well, this uh, maybe a little correction here or there, but I'm okay. Just a little bit of sin pulls you off just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, and you go further and further and further. My father came to visit me in prison. And he saw me through the glass. And when I seen him cry, that's one of the worst feelings ever. I was a cheater. I was a liar. I didn't know what to say to God. I just knew I had to go to Jesus to confess and to repent. When I actually opened scripture to understand what it said about my lifestyle, I'd never felt so much conviction and weight and guilt for sin and so much love and forgiveness and grace at the same time. I understood that I was guilty and I knew I needed forgiveness, so I clung to Him. I didn't want my sin anymore. I knew I had to forsake it. I had to be fully surrendered and repent. Jesus Christ died and shed his blood on the cross for all of our sins. And you've got to be willing to confess it and repent. Have you confessed your sin? Well, that's what I'm asking you to do tonight is turn around. Your sins will be removed. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, there's hope. Come back to your Father in heaven tonight. I knew what I had to do and I dreaded it. But I 
confessed everything. Asked other people for help. Surrendered to a Christian recovery program. They made me understand that I could only experience healing to the depth that I'm willing to confess and repent. The Bible says, yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and with mourning. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding steadfast in love. I cried out to God, will you forgive me? And then I went to Bob and I said, could you ever find it in your heart to love me again? I knew that in that moment I had to forgive her, but I was only capable of so much. But we together chose to press in, you know, to each other, but really into God, because we were hoping that he could rescue, not just us, but rescue our family and my children. When he was born, I asked Audrey if I could name him. I gave him my name, Robert. I don't want my son to ever question one day in his life whose boy he is. He's my son now. The fact that he has his name just is that complete acceptance it's such a picture of what God does for us. Not only does He accept us, not only does He forgive us, but He gives us His name and He redeems our life from what was supposed to be stolen and taken away. He gives us as a gift. And you know what? There's really a revival after repentance. I thought that I would be disqualified from any useful work in ministry if anybody ever found out what I had done. God has allowed me to coach kids. I'm not just sharing what I have been taught on the track. I'm sharing what Christ has taught me. This is what I get to do now. I get to pull other guys out of the soup the way God pulled me out of the soup. And it's a great joy to just participate in it. My wife and I are closer than we've ever been. She didn't tell me until just a few years ago that um, every night after I fell asleep, she would put her hand on my chest and pray for me. That God would make me into the man that I was supposed to be. I know God heard those prayers. My eyes were open to see God is worth it. The Lord gave me a wonderful husband who loves me and who loves God and who can serve alongside me. When you participate with sin, it always takes. But when you participate with God, He always gives life. Is there sin in your life that you've been accepting and it's actually just kind of begun to feel normal? But deep down in your heart, you know it's not right. Well, let's take just a moment to talk to God and let Him speak to you. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee o lamb of god i come i Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark block to thee whose blood. 
blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Have you gotten yourself in trouble and you don't know where to go, or what to do, or who to talk to? First of all, God is there. He loves you. He surely does. And the Bible says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. That's right. He can purify your heart, your life. And maybe you're a Christian and you've got sin in your life and you haven't confessed it, you haven't turned, you haven't repented, and it's dragging you down and you got yourself in this tailspin, or, or maybe you've never put your faith and trust in God and you know nothing about it, but you know your life is upside down. I want you to know right now that you can get everything on the right track and God will forgive you of your sins and set you free if you're willing to repent and believe on the name of His Son. Let's do that right now, okay? Just pray this prayer with me and just repeat it after me. Let's pray, let's talk to God. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he took my sins to the cross, that he died in my place. And I believe that you raised him to life. And I'd like to trust him now as my savior. And I want to follow him as my Lord from this day forward forever. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to grow deeper in your relationship with God and in His Son, Jesus Christ, go to our website. We've got some literature there that will help you to grow and to understand God's role and purpose in your life. God bless you. Thank you.